Okay, let's uh, let's move along here and welcome in our final guest of the day, saving the best for last. Uh, so honored that he is joining us, uh, Mr. Stefan Bonner, joining us right now on the line, right here on the MMA Hour. Stefan, how are you? Good. What's up, Ariel? I'm doing well. Uh, did you have a good afternoon? Am I, am I allowed to say where you were, or is that private? This afternoon. Yeah, or this morning, I should say. You're in the West Coast. I'm just at home. Oh, okay. You're just relaxing. Yeah, I'm back at home. Okay. Um, <laughs> the pregnant wife. Right. How How's that going, most importantly? Pretty good. I mean, she could have the baby any day now. She's ready. The baby was like seven and a half pounds last week, and it's all healthy, and <laughs> ready to go. That is very good to hear, and uh, we wish you guys a lot of luck. It's a very exciting time for the family, so uh, wishing you guys the best, and uh and, and, and wishing all our good wishes your way. So obviously it was it was an interesting weekend for you, Stefan. And this is the first time that we've heard you that we've heard you speak since then. Um, have you been able to digest what happened in, in the cage? And if so, how do you feel about what transpired on Saturday night? I mean, it was, it's, of course, it's disappointing to be taken out like that, and it hurts. And uh, you know, I I really thought I'd give him a you know, better fight, and I felt <laughs> that's the thing with MMA, especially fighting a great fighter like Anderson. I felt things were actually going pretty well according to game plan, and uh, then I make a little mistake, and he just, man, sent a, a knee in the perfect location right in my solar plex, the perfect timing, and even did a good, did a good job of after he tripped me when I was getting back up, shoving me so I kind of bounced off the cage and came into that knee and, you know, made it extra hard. And, uh, yeah, and it, it sucks. It sucks. It, you know, it's hard to swallow. Even though he's from a great, he's a great fighter and the greatest and all that, it's still disappointing to me. What were you thinking when he was up against the cage and essentially letting you punch him in the face and, you know, telling his corner to be quiet, just doing all that stuff? What was going through your mind? All right, you want to do this? Cool, I'll throw punches at you. And I'll just stick to my game plan, which is to get off, throw punches, and then clinch them before he could counter. So, it, yeah, I, I, I liked when he was doing that. <laughs> but does that sort of play tricks on you? Because usually in a fight, you're not expecting a guy to just stand up against the cage and let you punch him. So are you kind of wondering, like, okay, you're doing it and you're landing. You know, you, you, you put a great picture on Twitter yesterday of you connecting very well with his face, uh, are you thinking, like, what the heck is going on here? No, I was just trying to stick to my game plan and, like, uh, you know, get off. And before he could land anything big back, get close and smother him. And, uh, you know, look for takedowns. Um, yeah, and, <laughs> and then he did. He, he tied up my arm and landed a beautiful trip. And, like, the one regret I really had was when, when he tripped me, there was a part of me that said, you know, just stay down. You want to fight on the ground. You know, let him come on top and start, you know, like make a, like the more he fights on the ground, the better. Mm. And then there was another part of me that was, oh, you're all right, just get up. And then so he's getting up, he pushed me, I bounced off the cage and just perfect me in the perfect spot right when I had some air um, in, in my lungs and it just, it just crippled me. Have you watched the fight since then? Yeah. And 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 have you come to the conclusion that trying to get up was the the wrong move at that point? Yeah, I mean that's you know that's what he taught me in that transition of getting up, being a nice push and launch for me. And uh, man, yeah, this is a good shot. I, you mentioned on Twitter that yeah, it, it, it paralyzed I never, you. I never, I never been moved like that. But, yeah, yeah, you yeah, mentioned. I couldn't breathe. I could, right. was just I couldn't breathe at all. I couldn't move. I was just like like crippled, just waiting for my body to be able to get some air in. And it felt like an eternity. And then the ref stopped it. And when I saw the fight, I was like, no, that was pretty quick. It felt like I was trying, down trying to breathe longer than that. How long did it take for you to actually, you know, try to get back to 100% and like feel like you're actually able to breathe on your own here? Um, I don't remember. Uh, I mean, it was probably before I could really breathe almost. Good thirty seconds to a minute. And have you ever been hit like that before? Have you ever felt that in training or in a fight? 
You know, I've been, you know, yeah, I've been training, not in a fight, in training, I've, you know, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. So there were a couple times I went down for body shots. Um, and, uh, yeah, in training, you know, you go down and I always, you know, even from the old boxing days, there's a habit for me to start counting. And then when I get to eight, make myself get up and, uh, but, you know, in MMA, you can't, it's not like boxing, you know, you don't get that. So right when you go down, he starts hitting you, you know, I was trying to protect my face, but uh, I, I couldn't move. And like that was the key. If I would have moved in uh, a little bit, I, I probably would have got a little more time from the ref. Um, but, uh, I man, I really couldn't. I was I was paralyzed. You know, obviously we know about Anderson and how good he is and all that, but after being in the cage with him, was he better than you thought he would be? Just the fact that, like, the way he placed that knee and timed it, it was, I mean, uh, and the little trip and the push, just the whole setup and transition. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a part of me that I'm, I'm in awe of him. How long, and, and maybe you haven't yet, but how long did it take, you know, that you had a long trip home and uh, you, you flew back with Dana and all that? Did, how long did it take for you to get over the disappointment of the loss, or are you not over it yet? I mean, yeah, it's it's hard to get over, especially, you know, when I talk to someone like you who's asking me all these questions about it, that, that it brings it back up. But, you know, once I start, you know, talking to some other friends about other projects I have going on or, or you know, like putting in the car seat with my wife or the baby, and, and I'm, you know, I find myself looking forward to other things and excited about other things in my life, That's that's the best in terms of coping and getting over it, you know, you just start thinking about, you know, the you know opportunities and, and you know, things that are happening in your life that, that are positive and good. And, and yeah, then you don't dwell on the fight so much, but yeah, when you talk about it and go back to it and watch it and relive it, and it yeah, it's just hard. It's hard. Now I feel like an ass. I'm sorry for uh, bringing... <laughs> bring... What else are we going to talk about? <laughs> well, I just have a couple more questions about the fight, and then I'll get off it and ask you about something else. Um, obviously, you you told me the day before you had a very... Uh, you know, you had a tough weight cut because you took this fight on short notice. You had to lose a lot of weight. Did that affect you at all in the fight on Saturday night? No, the weight cut was normal. I always feel like, you know, I cut a lot of water the day of, and you feel like crap. So you get off that scale. That, it's it's normal. It was it was. Uh, I mean, in terms of weight cuts, that was that was uh, just a moderate one. It wasn't too. I've had worse. Um, but no, not at all. I felt great in the fight. I just, yeah, like I said, uh, in transition, like I was getting up. He, he used my momentum from bouncing off the cage. I, I had just taken a breath in, and I mean, if that knee landed an inch higher in my sternum or a little lower, more in the abdomen, I might have been able to survive but it just it was landed perfectly in the solar plexus and and i mean anderson's got some powerful knees i, I say his knees are harder than his punches um wow. his punches have great accuracy but you know a knee that's your leg muscle your hip flexors it's like the most powerful part of your body and uh with my momentum going into it it just uh um, it was a really beautiful knee and uh, the perfect placement had a lot of power behind it. And I, you know, I, I, I wanted to, to keep fighting and, and do better than that so bad, but it was just, it was so quick. The fight was stopped before I could, uh, start moving or, or even get any air back into my lungs. I couldn't breathe. And obviously I know you're disappointed about the result, but I'm wondering, can you look back at the week and the experience and getting that big fight that you had been asking for and uh, up until that point un unsuccessful in getting, uh, can you look back at this experience as, you know, all right, you know, I was in Brazil fighting the biggest star there. You know, Ed was just telling us the, the number two star as far as sports are concerned in Brazil. Was it a fun ride leading up to Saturday night for you? Yeah, it really was. It was a great experience. Uh, you know, I just in my mind was really convinced I'd uh, I'd do better, and, and that's just the hardest part. But yeah, just it was a, it's an honor to fight there in Brazil. That's where it all kind of started, and you know that's where you know Carlson, Sergio, both from Copacabana. I mean, I love Brazil and feel it's kind of a part of me uh, as a fighter for sure. So it was really an honor to fight there, and I have a lot of respect for Anderson. 
it was great just being in there with uh, such a great fighter. Have you decided if that was your last UFC fight? No, I haven't decided. No, I. Yeah, I, I gotta think about that one. Are you leaning in one direction or the other? <laughs> No, just uh, I guess it depends on. Um, it, it's 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 hard. I'm not you know, I just I just lost. I just got stopped. So I I'm not like in a position where I could, you know, really ask for too much right now. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. So I you know got to see what my manager comes up with. You know, there's a rumor that came out over the last few hours. I don't know if you heard. John Jones, Chael Sonnen are going to be coaches on the next season of The Ultimate Fighter, and they're going to fight in April. And as a result, the Forrest Griffin versus Chael Sonnen fight, which was supposed to happen on December 29th in Las Vegas, is no longer happening. There's a rumor out there, or at least fans are talking about it, you versus Forrest number three to maybe close out your careers. Have you heard about this? Uh, no, I just heard that Jones and Chael might coach. Uh, that was that's I just heard that about a couple minutes ago from my wife. Is that something that interests you? You versus Forrest three in Vegas uh, New Year's Eve card? Yeah, maybe. Is this like the time that I called you and asked you if you were fighting Anderson and you told me no, but deep down you really were? <laughs> no, like <laughs> It was funny because I didn't. I got a text that said, "Like, what do you think of this?" And I was like, "Yeah, right." And I, before I could respond to that text, you you called me. That's that's what was like. Wow, something eerie is going on here. But no, no one. I haven't talked to anyone um, about that. I actually just heard that from my wife about Jones and Jail Coach, and I was like, "Wow, really? Oh, wow. Well, it makes sense because." Uh, there's definitely going to be drama, and Chael is very good on TV, and you know he's. It's uh, people are going to want to tune in just to hear what he has to say, and, and uh, you know the conflict between those two will be very interesting. Um, so it's a good move on the UFC part. I like I like the idea in terms of the TV entertainment drama value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as a as a uh, let's say sporting value, as a guy who fights in two, in the two hundred five pound division, you look at Chael, who's zero and one um, in the UFC at two hundred five. Does it bug you at all that he's getting a title shot? No, I, I like that matchup. Like, see, I mean, Jones has been really good with good wrestlers before, but he's been able to shut them all down. Like, what happens? If John Jones gets put on his back, that's something we haven't seen yet, and that's an interesting scenario. And um, yeah, I think there's a good shot that Shale could do that. Does that mean he'll win? Or I think it went no, but that's the start. That's a, uh, you know, a, a, you always want to see guys challenge and be put in positions, and that's you know why I'm a little disappointed. I think Jones Anderson won and, and take him into deeper water. So like you know. I, it's uh, it's it's disappointing for sure, but um, I think Chael could can make the fight interesting and put him on his back and put him somewhere where we haven't seen uh, Jones and, and you know and give him a challenge. So obviously, it sounds like for now you're you're not going to make a decision about your future. You obviously have a very big uh, event happening in your life with the with the the soon to be birth of your first child. So outside, as far as MMA related stuff, what else do you have? Because I know you do you do the t shirts. You you always seem to have. A lot of things going on. Like you seem to be one of those guys who really prepared himself for life after you do the TV work on fuel and all that stuff. Um, what are the other things that you're excited about right now in your career outside of actual fighting? Um, some that uh, I'm really excited about is I've been, you know, I've set up this charity called Garrett's Fight. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it. I have that fundraiser in July for it. And, Garrett Holiv is a martial artist with Down syndrome, and it's a really inspiring story how he was, after high school, kind of fat, lonely, depressed kid playing video games. His, his dad would have to call people up and beg him to take Garrett out or hang out with him. He really didn't have a life. He wasn't like a normal member of society. Anyways, his dad invested in a ATT affiliate gym in Davie, Florida, right outside Fort Lauderdale area, and uh, he brought Garrett to the gym, and Garrett was like, wow, this looks cool, you know, I give this a try. And, you know, he 
he's really short. Most people, kids with Down syndrome are. He's around five feet tall, and uh, he was like around 170 pounds, so he's really overweight. And let's fast forward a couple of years. He's been training at the gym, and he's lost like 40 pounds. He's in good shape. He knows about good nutrition, and and um, yeah, he's been training and competing. Um, and which really inspired me. She's doing these Naga tournaments, San Chow matches, and and competing in these martial arts against kids who aren't even disabled. And uh, and I mean that's just inspiring to me. And that made me want to set something. I mean he's got a life now. He 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 plugs gym memberships there. He teaches the kids classes. The other um, teachers and students at the gym he's made friends with, and they bring him out with them. And he's just got a life. And it's like you know, and and he's healthy now and happy and has confidence. And because he, you know he just was able to do martial arts and belong to something. And that's the biggest problem kids like him face is just, just belonging and being included in stuff. And so the charity is uh, A, for, so other uh, kids with special needs like it could, him could participate in martial arts. And, and two, um, I, I want to, you know, campaign the Special Olympics to offer a little something more in terms of martial arts right now. They just offer judo. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like getting thrown hard and landing hard. He likes submission grappling. He likes MMA. So, yeah, I'd like to see him compete on a level playing field against kids, you know, who who also have disabilities. Because, you know, he has a lot of heart by, by fighting kids without disabilities, but it's, it's not fair. A lot of these kids are, you know, he's fighting up a weight class, too. He naturally could probably make 125. He's fighting 135, 145 against wow. bigger, stronger kids without disabilities. So I like to see the Special Olympics, um, you know, offer a little something more. But anyways, I've been talking to some uh, directors, and um, but we're working really close with Wally Rizaki, the president of Tap Out Films, and um, um, we're we're working on putting this into motion. My original plan was to make it a documentary, but um, he's uh, he seems to really believe we got a, a director that's on board to make this a series and and put that into motion. How and old is he? I'm really excited about that. I just uh, Garrett's 22. 22. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I was just uh, emailing with Wally, actually, right before you call, and I got a great email about that. He's excited about this project, and his director is, is really excited about it, too, and he thinks he can make it, we can make this into a series, and uh, and that really that helped me feel better about the fight. So I'm, you know, just really excited about taking steps forward on this project. Well, it sounds like you were in a good place, and it sounds like for a second there, I took you a step back. I apologize for that, um, but uh, now we we end on a good note. That's a, yeah. that's an unbelievable project. Yeah, I knew. Don't worry <laughs> about it. We I, I knew we were going to have to talk about the fight. And I appreciate you coming to us first. Uh, it, it was a great effort, a great show. Uh, you did everything you could, and um, you know, I guess sometimes that happens in MMA. And I think at, at the end of the day, if you look back on your career, Stefan, can you, if that was your 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 final fight? Um, are you happy? Are, are you content now? Did, did you get the fight that you wanted? And, and, and was that enough to, if it was your last fight, was that enough to end your career on? I'm definitely happy. I'm, I'm so thankful they gave me that fight. And yeah, I, <laughs> I had a little apologetic that I, I didn't give them. Yeah, I, I didn't do better, but you know, whatever. I got to get over that. But, but yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, I'm, I am. I'm happy. I got nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's losing sucks and it's hard to swallow. But um, you know, I went in there with Anderson, and uh, you know, and I followed my game plan and and you know, did what I had to do. But that's MMA. One little mistake, one little opening is all it takes. And with a guy like Anderson Silva, that's all he needs. And just landed this perfect me at the perfect time and. Um, and got the victory. So hats off to Anderson, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with yeah, I'm, I'm happy with. I, I can I could honestly say I, I've never I've never had a fight where I went where I looked back and said like oh I choked or or I didn't come to fight or mentally I wasn't prepared or you know even even through like terrible injuries and fighting sick before like I, I still suck it up and and do my best and. And yeah, I got nothing to be ashamed of. By the way, how was the flight back in that private plane with Dana? Oh, the best! I had my own bed. <laughs> wow! He's got these uh, this big mainframe database with just hundreds and hundreds of movies on them, 
Um, and so you got your own iPad with hundreds of movies to choose from your own bed, and you you have a flight attendant waiting on your hand and foot making you food. And it was so funny too. She's like, because uh, I was just eating and eating and eating. She's <laughs> like, oh my god, like this, I'm having total deja vu. Like uh, you know, after Forrest fought in Brazil, like his wife was having a baby too, and he was a bottomless pit as well. He was such a pig, just like you. Like, oh my god. You guys are That's linked. Funny. You but, guys, but I, yeah, I didn't want the uh, the flight to land. I remember <laughs> the window scene. We were over the desert. Be like, oh no, we're home already. Like I'm so comfortable. I'm, you know, taking out, and having chocolate and yogurt, and oh, it was great. By the way, have you decided whether or not you'll you, you'll call your first child for us? It was never going to be for us. Oh. I'm thinking Griffin Brandon. Griffin Brandon. Okay. And I, uh, and and all if my wife said if I won the fight then I I could name him Stefan, uh, but I didn't. So maybe Stefan could be one of his. But yeah, the idea is like I like Brandon Griffin, Stefan, and maybe we'll name them all three. And when he's old enough, pick what he likes the best. So Griffin is going to be involved in the name some somewhere. Well, you'll see. I'm not going to like promise you anything. <laughs> okay. It'll be somewhat of a surprise. But, okay. Yeah. All right, Griffin, all right. Brandon, Stephen, Stephen, Brandon, Griffin. I like it. And it's different. I'll, I'll, Brandon, I'll, Stephen, I'll, Griffin, I'll, but <laughs> we'll see which one he likes around like kindergarten. I'll leave you you with this, uh, Stefan, and then we'll let you go. This is a comment from our our page here, where we have tons of comments on the site. And I don't usually do this, but it, it just caught my eye. Uh, a fan named Wise Toad writes, Honestly, the more I hear Stefan speak, the bigger fan I become. He's just so damn classy and such a big inspiration for me in terms of bringing MMA to the forefront. So there you go. You, you may have lost the fight, but uh, gaining fans, you continue to gain fans. Uh, a pleasure to work with you on the broadcast. Hopefully I could do it again in the future. And, uh, and, 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 and I tip my cap to you and what you did on Saturday night against the greatest of all time. And most importantly, wish you and your wife uh, the very best with the upcoming birth of your, your first child. Awesome. What was his name again? Well, his name that's is Wise Toad. Right. I doubt that's his real name, but that's, so. that's where he goes, goes by. Well, th- thank you, Ariel. Um, I got to say, you're, you're, you're a class act yourself. I mean, as hard as it is to talk about this, it, I'm glad I got to do it with you. And uh, thank you, Wise Toad. That, that really helped. Thanks so much, Stephen. Keep us posted, and, and, and good luck in the coming days with your wife. Appreciate it, Ariel. All right, there there he is, Stefan Bonner, joining us from his home in Las Vegas. Um, Great stuff there from Stefan. It's it's hard, as as we said last week with Mayhem. I think in my in my old age and being a father and whatnot, getting a little emotional. It's hard when when you you talk to these guys and you see them, and and you know now you get an opportunity sometimes to work with them, given the. The, the the TV situation it's hard not to feel you know it's hard not to feel I don't care we, I try to be as unbiased as possible I, I really truly do um, and it's something that's so important to me but it's hard not to feel happy um, for John Fitch when he when he gets a win like that considering all he's been through and the way he responds and it's hard not to feel um, for for Stefan Bonner and it's hard not to feel for a guy like Dustin Poirier when he loses to the Korean Zombie and reacts the way he did it's just we are human beings as well, and uh, and that w- that was uh, that got to me a little bit there. But I I really do appreciate Stefan stopping by and talking to us, and especially first. And and I wish I truly do wish his wife and and him um, the best of luck in the in the coming days with the the birth of their first child. That's a that's a great story, and and that will surely make him get over the fight very quickly. I can assure him of that.